going to be a really big question is will he have that observer in time it looks like yes but even so banshees are very brutal to deal with on this map yeah and the last time we did have banshees go out or i believe it was a little drop it did force tt1 to move back so perhaps that's the way he's going to go actually last game it was utilizing the drops to try to get his units out of there that forced him back in this case maybe the banshees would do exactly the same but either way you've got tt1 with this base up he's going to lose an scv to see what's going on he counts uh, at least gets a good idea about how many probes are at that expansion and knows that he is at a huge economic disadvantage and you know i want to point out how terrible that feels and to, you know, likewise know why that's so good for TT1. If you are ever in a really uncomfortable situation and finally the game begins calming down, if you suddenly see an expansion, it is one of the most terrible feelings. And there's Pain User carefully edging his way around that pylon. Did he fly into it? I didn't, I didn't have vision of it when he went over there, but I think he might have flown into vision and then went around the side. It's another great thing that TT1 uh, does. We've seen it on every single map where he just spreads those pylons out across the map to give him vision clear warning it's like uh it's just the fire drill for him if anything comes into sight he's going to be able to catch it and here comes that banshee around the side cloak is finished second banshee about ready to come out and there's the cloak just now finishing like you said and the factory does have the add-on hasn't begun making any tanks yet clearly wants to get both of those banshees together but it is going to be quite a long path and now we do have that observer done right now for tt1 and it's going to be a big question whether he attacks with it or excuse me uh, moves forward with it to try to scout his opponent's base or plays defensively at the same time there is a little retreat force by tt1 to head back home so that way he doesn't have to worry too much about where to place that obs and it looks like uh yeah pain user is going to try to send out a second banshee he's going to be checking the island expansion and as he does he's going to see that second banshee spotted right over there he is going to meet up with his buddy actually banshee one moving into the main while banshee two may be attacking the uh natural here he gets one pro number two that observer is fairly far away he's going to wait to activate his cloak there it uh -oh. goes uh oh and here comes the advance forward will he be able to get the cloak in time there's the cloaking field detection though so that is going to fall but in the meantime this one banshee has gotten five kills and tt1 is doing a probe trade right here these two banshees are being so annoying with 10 health left it did not get taken out and now pain user is waiting until he sees that advance forward of units so he can begin the retreat second obs out and it looks like tt1 smartly pulling that observer back and Pain user for the first time this game is getting a little bit of calm and again stimming one marauder who is sitting here full of adrenaline doing nothing. Yeah, uh, <laughs> he's, uh, but he's pumped up. Day. He's pumped up for yeah, the finals here. He's excited to be here. Finals, absolutely. Combat shield about ready to complete. First tanks are, uh, or first few tanks are starting to come out and Vikings about to hit as well. Now again, he did manage to pull TT1 back to his uh -huh. base. That's great. But he's so far behind in this expansion. Like really at this point, You've got to be doing something to make that up. Well, it looks like what Pain User is going to try to do is not play for the, for the mid game. He's going to play for the late, late game. He is going to be getting siege tanks. We even see a second factory going down. No doubt going to be slowly creeping forward with bunkers and tanks, picking off these destructible rocks and hoping that if TT1 engages him, it is on Pain User's siege tank defensive turf. TT1, though, getting that very fast plus one armor, building the cannons to stop the Banshees. And so we got Banshee close. Yeah, Banshee's moving in again. He'll cloak right away and uh, begin to hit these probes once again. Not really sure where that observer is. There it is, following the army. He's got to be careful. He doesn't have a very good escape route getting uh -oh. out of here. He'll have to fly towards the expansion. And I believe there's an observer and a cannon over there. Oh, the Banshee will not make it. He will instead explode in the jungle. And it seems like Pain User is slowly creeping forward in the resource counting station. 150 food for TT1, very large lead. Tanks continuing to churn out. Is there any armor anywhere? Does not look like it. Small number of units picking off these outlying pylons by TT1. Even though it seems like a loss, this is still a lot of information that TT1 is getting, that there's small numbers of units beginning to advance across the map. So it's time to begin making some really powerful units to deal with the push. And as we see, big Colossus coming out, as well as a Twilight Council. And I, I mean, once again, at this point, you look at that front, and you see, oh, that's a pretty nice army moving out. And then you go over here in the base, and you see that he's got a nice second decent-sized army that's out there. And he, oh, he just, this is the second time that we've seen this, just have such an amazing army. 
army split up so he doesn't have to panic. He won't get put out of position at all. He's going to take these rocks down at the gold and prepare to uh, expand there. We've also got pain user doing the exact same thing with fewer units, but the timing will probably work out for him quite good. He'll salvage that bunker right there, put another one forward just a little bit, and try to make his way towards that Zelnaga Tower. But oh my goodness, look at the size of this army from TT1 advancing forward. Units just streaming back from his base, needs to grab that Colossus, getting more and more gateways, and also getting the Zealot with leg speed upgrade. He has plenty of those, but will he attack earlier? He's at 170 food to pain users, 126. Oh, look at that radius on that tank. This is a very tense moment for both players. And he is going to try to skirt around the sides here, and here oh. we go. Huge arc from TT1. He's advancing forward. He has a lot of Guardian Shields thrown down, but look at the tanks in the back dealing enormous damage. And the Stalker arc is gigantic. More Siege tanks coming into the front. The Immortal desperately trying to get into the fight, and now the Colossus looks like it is very close to going down, but TT1 may have busted this again. A Raven out, but all the tanks are done, and it looks like the defense has been broken by TT1. Yeah, and here we go. He's going to go in for the kill once again in nearly exactly the same spot that he was before. We're going to have a couple more units up here on the high ground, but it will not be a problem as these units will quickly go down to this still nice force coming out here by TT1. He could end this one quickly oh! and be right back in. Force field on the ramp, SCV's trap getting annihilated. There is the orbital command lifting up, rapidly losing life. It is at half health. If he takes out this orbital command, that could be game right there. Pain user has almost no forces, and TT1 is just rallying him in, and Zealot with leg speed is just finished. And look at this army once again. We're back to chapter one where he just sat right outside the main base and uh, just waited for his opponent. This time he is going to push in, being confident he can get up there. And look at that. All the SCVs come to uh, feel that nice warm glow of the Colossus laser. There and it there's is. there's a good game. Wow. TT1 will get the chance to battle it out against Jinro. Congrats to Pain User from Lazarus Gaming, our third place player. Pain user has earned himself $2,500. And that is not shabby, but of course these guys strive to be number one. So still, I'm sure, a disappointing loss for Pain user, especially after the great victory coming off of Liquid Tyler in that amazing extended series that he won 4-2. to two. And that will put TT1 back into the grand finals to face once again Jinro. And it's funny because we did mention it, that when we watched those series of matches between Jinro and TT, one that this indeed could be a preview of the finals and it was exactly that I mean TT1 became a different player in that series in, in both the games he lost against Jinro it was the two gate expand playing very cautiously getting the observers out getting a few units and then relying so much on that Colossus and Jinro abused that by crunching him with two really nicely timed attacks but against pain user crushing with early pressure, containing, and then getting a ton of immortals out, gateways, great defense, and then eventually crushing that front. Guys, do not go away. MLG 2010, the national championships for StarCraft II is about to conclude with the grand finals coming up next, TT1 versus Jinro. I'm DJ Wheat. I am Dana. And when we come back, the action will finish.